Good morning! Welcome to Knitting Samurai Plus One video podcast. I'm your host, Steph, also known as Knitting Samurai over on Ravelry. There's a podcast group over there if you'd like to join, and you can find show notes for this video cast at the blog, www.knittingsamuraiplus1.blogspot.com, and one is the number. I am totally having deja vu and I keep, uh, this is like my third take trying to record that because I want to say expect it knitter, expect it knitter and that's sort of freaky because it's been a really long time since I've ridden as the expected knitter. <laughs> Actually, today is January 1st, 2012, so Roland's four month birthday will be in two days, so it's been four months since I've ridden as the expected knitter. Uh, this is episode 11, and it is entitled, oh, I don't know, Happy New Year? Busting out the knitting? Patriots? I don't know, something. So, uh, there is a football game on this afternoon, so I am wearing my very first football t-shirt. I got it for Christmas, right? Because being a football fan is new to me. And don't tell Steve, but I sort of like the Jets, even though I'm not supposed to. I know, what kind of a fan am I? I'm not supposed to like the Jets. They're like our nemesis or something. But I sort of like them. But when Steve's around, I... Because I need an alternate team. I can't just cheer for the Patriots. They don't play enough games. There isn't enough football to go around if I just cheer for this one team. So, when Steve's around, my other team is... Oh no, I don't remember. Whatever team, discount double check, Aaron Rodgers is for on. I think that's the Packers. I get it mixed up, Packers and Steelers. Steel Packers. I root for the Packers when Steve's around and the Patriots aren't on. So, And of course, if they play the Patriots, I root for the Patriots. So, shh, don't tell him. <laughs> I do like the Jets too, though. Oh, I kicked the desk. Sorry about that. And I don't know if you could see, we're actually sitting at the desk in my bedroom. And is it is recording with us today. So, yes, I am wearing football apparel. My mother is still sort of in shock. There was... Um, Christmas Eve. There was Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve is the day that my family has always opened presents. When I was growing up, um, I never had to wait till Christmas Day. We'd go, our tradition was to get bundled up and go out for a ride and look at Christmas lights. And while we were gone, while we were gone, Santa knew to come to our house. And so we'd come back and there'd be presents. And he had been there and eaten the cookies and taking the carrots up to the reindeer and all that so that that we just held on to it and it works out really well because then Christmas Day we spend with Steve's family who um, he has a younger brother who's very adamant that Christmas is only on Christmas Day and there is no moving Christmas so it's a good thing we're flexible over here so yeah so Christmas Eve we were with my parents and football was on TV and I was like, Steve ahead of time was like, hey, do you think we can get your mom to like let us watch football? Now, I grew up in a house where the TV was rarely on like a Thursday and a Friday night. That would be the only time we'd watch TV. My dad was huge into reading and I was huge into like, no, <laughs> I entertained myself other ways. And um, so the thought of watching a sporting event during Christmas, like the biggest holiday of the year, I was like, you can ask her, I'm not. <laughs> and because uh, their living room, of course, is where we would be and they have this massive TV because now they watch TV, they just didn't watch it too much when I was a kid. Um, so they have this massive TV. So anyways, yes, the game was on, muted for the afternoon Christmas Eve. So that was kind of funny. Uh, and here I am rambling on about Christmas and how it was. It was completely different than the year before, I'll tell you that. <laughs> so the year before, um, I'm an only child. So Christmas Eve is my parents, Steve and I. And so we were sitting down to a nice dinner. Mom always makes some giant vegetarian spread of like four or five different really fancy dishes that she doesn't cook any other time of the year. And so last year... 2010 we sat down for Thanksgiving at uh, Thanksgiving for Christmas at dinner and about halfway through the year or no it wasn't halfway through the year we first sat down made a toast to you know great cooking Merry Christmas all that 
And at the end of the toast, I made the toast. I said, and you're gonna be grandparents. And my parents both, like my dad lit up and was like, oh, congratulations. And you know, really excited. My mother sitting next to him, no, no, no. She was so shocked, she just couldn't believe it. And so she turns and looks at him and is like, no, and he looks at her and he says, yes, Terry, they're going to have a baby. <laughs> funniest thing like we will never forget her reaction no no oh <laughs> so um anyway so that was the year before so this year we had Roland right and he was there for some of the present opening and then just a little bit like we opened three or four Roland presents first and then it was time for him to go down for a nap so he went for a nap and then we opened presents and ate and so it was like he was there for like a visit but then he wasn't there and it was back to being the four of us but we had all these fun, cool presents to open and all kinds of cute little clothes. And yeah, my parents went, okay, let's be honest. My mother went a little crazy. I think we have all the toys and clothing Roland will need for the next year of his life. Like, she bought so much and diapers and like anything she could think of, she just bought. And it was so sweet. Bibs, like all kinds of goodies and totally appreciate it. But it was like, holy cow, this baby made out, and how are we getting this all back in the car? Because <laughs> we stayed with them for the holiday weekend. So, anyway, so that's that. And then the next morning, we packed up Roland again and made the two-hour drive up to Steve's parents' house and had Christmas with them. And his brother and sister-in-law Skyped in from, they live in D.C., so they Skyped in and we had a nice day all together and some interesting cool food and then of course we only got more toys this uh oh I don't have it in here she got him this toy that you touch it and it goes hee 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 so you know he learns um cause and effect and you hang it up on his car seat and he could just bat at it and it giggles 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 yeah thank god there's an off button on that one so had a really great Christmas. I surprisingly did not get a single knitted related item. Can you believe it? I been wow I don't even know. I don't even know the last time that happened. Granted I didn't write a list and I just sort of mentioned to Steve I wanted some knit picks bookends and he didn't get them for me. Mm. But um, other than that I didn't even ask for anything knitting related so it's partially my own fault but I got lots of other good things, so it's okay. And God knows I've got plenty of yarn. So, that is my ramble. That is my <laughs> recap of Christmas. I didn't even mean to start there, but it just went that way. So, you know, sometimes that happens. So let's talk about what's on my needles. Well, right now you can see my hands going. I am working on my second Pembroke vest. It is a Kristen Kapoor pattern. I am using Cascade 220. I wrote it down in color 819. I am knitting the 18 month size and converting it to in the round. So just um, I'm on the last row of one by one ribbing. So there you go. You can see not too exciting, right? I'm actually following the pattern and <laughs> using size fives and size seven needles. And so far so good. So that's the first thing, right? My second Pembroke vest. This is for our knit along. Um, I had wanted to knit three different vest patterns for Roland. And this is my second attempt on the second pattern. So I'm still not done. No, not going to be finishing anytime soon. Probably end of January would be the earliest I would finish this and then the owls, whatever that one was called. The owls vest. I want to knit that too for him. And I have learned that... Um, He's wearing 12 month size clothes right now, and so there's one vest that I finished, the Oz vest, he can wear that now, but um, maybe I'll make the 12 month size and the owls too. I mean, there's still, it's January, we've got another three, four cold months, four months of cold weather here before, you know, it's warm enough to hang out in the rest of the house without layers, lots of layers on, so. Maybe I'll knit the 12 month size in that too. But anyways, um, so this is my second Pembroke, which means, can only mean one thing. The first Pembroke is finished. So oh, let me do up my buttons here. Finished, ends woven in, um, photo shoot taken. 
I think I loaded the pictures onto Ravelry already. But so here it is. This is the Pembroke. It is the 12 month size. Um, again, Kristen Kapoor. The yarn is Knit Picks Swish DK in the color Asparagus. I knit it on size fives and size sixes. It's a super stretchy little vest. Um, <clears throat> the I buttoned it real fast before I showed it to you so that you wouldn't see. See, I used these wooden, these blue wooden buttons. Yeah, after I blocked it, I laid it out flat to dry, and you can see it a little bit. The dye from the buttons ran all over the sweater. So I walked into the laundry room and looked at it, and there were these big blue circles. <clears throat> Actually, they looked almost black all over the fabric and I was just like dear god no this is a cabled baby vest that I worked really hard to make so I read the instructions on the shout you know um, stain remover stuff sorry my elbows are making the table move on the shout box and I was on the bottle and I was like oh god do I dare do this and I was like well it looks so crappy anyways with these two big inky black blue spots all over it that it can't get anywhere so I sprayed it, I let it soak, I washed it again, I, just that part of it though, and then I blue dried it <laughs> because I wanted it to dry really fast to see, and it's not that bad, and actually buttoned, you can't even, it, I mean, it's there, I know it's there, but it's not that noticeable. So here's what I have to say about this vest, other than my uh, button faux pas, and I did twist the cables on the outside opposite each other instead of the same way, so that these would carry up and go over the outside, the straight ones the only pattern change I made other than knitting it in the round as well but I finished this this is a 12 month size it looks adorable on him it fits him perfectly it's not like well width wise it fits him perfectly it's not too stretched because sometimes they look like that but it is definitely short for him so um, you could see in <laughs> use my shelf here to display the item um, you can see in the pictures I took on my rev page that for this that from the back it doesn't it barely covers the waistband on his jeans and uh, to get the pictures to come out nice I tugged it down in the front so it would look good but definitely like when he's laying there all stretched out about that much too short so from the place where the elastic band on his pants is and then the denim fabric about that much of that shows which is more than I would like for a cute like you know it's a little bit of a formal outfit but and it's funny when he has it on his cheeks he has no neck none of the men in, in Steve's family do but um well Steve has the most neck of all of them I should say <laughs> um his, between the no neck and the big giant giant cheeks that he's got they just sit on it and you can't even tell it's a v-neck so it's really fun so I'm knitting him the next size up, hoping it'll be long enough, and if it's a little loose because of the ribbing, so be it. Whatever, the ribbing will cinch in, because this fits in perfectly, and I think the difference in stitches is like 25 stitches. So we're talking about, what, three inches more, maybe? It'll be fine. It'll be fine, because that boy is growing like crazy. So when I, so I've decided that this is the one that's going to our friends, that had the little boy, he's three weeks old, four weeks old now, four weeks old. So this will be perfect. Like he can grow into it or it'll be a little loose. That's fine. So he's getting that. And then after I finished this vest, I cast on, haven't blocked it yet though, cast on for a matching hat. So here you go. Um, knit on size fives for the ribbing and seven for the base of the hat. So you can see that the ribbed twists are a little bit further apart on here. I was in a bit of a hurry, but you and I can see that and we know it, but we're knitters. They're not knitters and they won't care. And I really like the way the top came out. I was able to maintain the integrity of the cables for pretty far up and then, you know, kept a little pattern in the decreases. So little cute matching hat. I got one of these ones, this gift set. And so I'm really happy to be able to give someone else one. Um, yeah, it was a great idea. So those are off my needles and moving on up um what else have i been working on oh and the hat is 100 stitches 
just to FYI. It's 100 stitches around. I did five of the cable twists before I started the decreases and it fits Roland perfectly. So this is a 12 month vest, a little short, but fits him. And this I would say is a 12 month hat as well. So there you go. It is a little bit of a beanie though, you know, like it goes over his ears, but it's a, definitely a fitted hat with the ribbon going on. So that's that. Um, in not baby knitting, <laughs> I have also been working on my delivery socks. So we had some, we obviously a four hour car ride, two hours to the in-laws and two hours back. So during the in the dark portion of that, I did some knitting on my delivery socks. I was, I think in this pink section last time you saw them and now I am into this teal section up here. I have about um, half an inch to go before I start the ribbing. No, an inch, an inch. Let me just line it up. Yeah. So the ribbing starts in the pink at the end of the yellow. So I've got to finish the blue and then move on to the ribbing and then slap in an afterthought heel. You can see my placement, the yellow right there, and they will be done. So these have gone smashingly. The yarn is three is twisted in fiber in the Harry Potter colorway. I still don't understand that name. And it is super soft. I absolutely love it. I gave um, my mom the pair of zigzaggy of socks knit out of three is twisted and she absolutely loved them so that's awesome but I was looking at my project page and I forgot to take a picture of the finished object so I'm gonna have to go see her and be like put on your socks and let me take pictures of your feet so anyway so that's where those are at they should be done next time I bring them out I don't like to show them to you unless I have some sort of progress like substantial progress because it's a straight sock and a sock not very exciting, but it goes, it goes. Yes, I did run out to Duncan this morning. The row monster and I went out. He's doing so good when he uh, was, well, up until like the last, the first three and a half months of his life, he would scream bloody murder every time you put him in the car seat. And now he's like, hey, what's going on? He's more curious about his environment, I think. And so he doesn't really care that there are straps up him under his chubby cheeks and he's constrained and it's uncomfortable. He doesn't care. He's like, okay, what's happening? And he's just looking around. <sighs> Makes for much less stressful trips out of the house. So yeah, we did that this morning, went to Duncan. And what else do I have to tell you about? I have so much knitting to share with you. Oh my God, guess what happens when you have a few days off? And I told you about having working from home on Fridays. I start that next Friday, so that will be awesome. Has nothing whatsoever to do with what I'm about to show you, but I just threw that out there. Uh, <laughs> remember I had talked about the, um, the socks that I am knitting. These socks, wait, I didn't write notes on my show notes because I knew, oh yeah, I knew I had notes in my bag. Yeah, so I write, I have this great, little notebook it has magnet I got it at Barnes and Noble or maybe borders I don't remember which one lives closest to me but I love it so it has this little whoop, and I write my pattern on it and usually I carry this around in the bag but then when I have too many going I uh, write it down write down the pattern and rip it off rather than printing out a whole page and nine times out of ten I end up memorizing it by the time I'm done writing it. For some reason writing it helps me learn patterns better than actually knitting it. Like I'll, I'll get it eventually knitting but I'll get it faster. I'll see the repetition easier if I write it. So these are the Giles Wavy Socks by Ann Campbell. I am using Online Super Sock in the Lavender Fair Isle color number 1178. So I have loved this color forever. and. Typically, I think of online, how to say this nicely, as an inexpensive yarn. <laughs> but um, I was at Webb's once in the warehouse section, and that's the only place I've ever seen online, um, in the warehouse section, and I saw this color, and I fell madly and deeply in love with it. And it's weird, because it's not my typical colors. I don't know if you can see it, but it's like this pink and mauve and deep purple, and then this... 
what shade of green would you call that? Like a, a, te a teal green? I want to say lopis, but I have no idea what that looks like. Just this really deep saturated teal green. Anyways, so I've had this sitting, skeined up in my living room. Like, I have very little yarn out in my house. Um, skeined up in my living room in a place of honor next to the TV and like this decorative basket that holds it's not a it's like a it's a cast iron wire basket that you can see into that holds 10 skeins of yarn so like the 10 juiciest prettiest yarns I have sit in that and this the inexpensive online sock yarn has been sitting in there for a very long time because even though it isn't like pricey it's still very valuable to me because I love the color okay so there's the background on this so I cast it on, and <clears throat> after I cast it on, using US size 1 2.5 millimeter needles, <laughs> I realized that um, I have a lot of socks, and there's a very dear friend of mine that I would like to give some socks to. She's, uh, she's a knitter, but she's not a sock knitter, and so those are the best people to give socks to, if you ask me, because they understand the effort and they're very appreciative but you gotta get them to fit right or they really are like why did you bother doing this but anyways so i cast him on and started knitting them and oh i love him and look at how the color is going and oh it's so pretty and i'm so happy with it and then i got this real altruistic moment oh look sorry shiny this is the toy <laughs> go ahead be in a bad mood <laughs> Turn that thing off. Oh, and then Steve got him this toy. It was highly recommended on Amazon as one of the top children toys. It's this wooden, they call it a fish. Would you call this a fish? And I opened it at Christmas because, you know, yeah, I had nothing to say because everything I had to say was completely inappropriate about my uh, little flaccid fish here. Thanks, Steve, for giving Roland, our son, a flaccid fish to play with that has a smiley face on it. Okay, enough of that. Um, <laughs> String bean is still the best toy. And don't forget the beloved... Oh, she's she's been strangled. Sophie. He loves Sophie. I think all kids love Sophie, though. Anyways, okay, back to my point here. These socks... Um, so I get going them and I had an altruistic moment and I was just like, you know what? I should knit them for her. And so I, last time I showed them to you, I told you they were a gift for somebody and they're going along lovely, lovely, lovely. And it's a really fun pattern to knit. Um, I think it's every fourth row is the patterning. So you have some like rest, you just buzz through it and do it. So we're in the car and we're driving up for Christmas and <clears throat> I'm doing this cause it's daylight and I can see what I'm doing. I didn't want to pull out the headlamp, you know sleeping baby and all and um I really I started it felt like it was about time to start the gusset increases okay so I do that toe up gusset increases I do my heel flap I get up to here and I start to finish the leg and it occurs to me looking at it that man that really looks like more my socks and so I finish or I measured it and yep sure enough i had gone what looked like the right length yeah for a size 11 sock because that's what i'm used to knitting i should have done about an inch less of the toe of the foot to fit her because she does not wear my size my shoe size so rather than ripping back i was about here when i realized that i said okay well i have lots of tall socks i have lots of socks i like short socks um those are probably the ones I go to the most often, so let's just make these short socks and move on. So they started off being really altruistic, and I was going to give them away and be a good, kind person. But they're going to stay with me. I really didn't mean to do that. <laughs> like, there are times when I do things, and I'm like, oops! <laughs> I really didn't mean to on this. And I'm very tempted to uh, set this aside and cast on something else for her, because I really like the idea knitting her a pair of socks because I think she would really appreciate it so you may see these again you may see its mate get cast on or I may set it aside and you won't see it for six months until I finish her pair and then come back to this so that's the thought there and the I call them weenus socks but they're not they're the 
wavy guiles, whatever, I said it already. So there, and then, <laughs> because when I have free time, what do I do? I knit, I knit, Roland knits with me. Um, I bought him these onesies from Children's Place that are white, and then they have every day of the week. It was a seven pack, so it's like, I love Monday, I love Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and the hearts are all different colors, and they came in this bag, and I was like, oh yeah, so cute, gonna be a knitting bag, so this is what I got out of it. I love every day, and he loves whatever day we're on, and of course, I don't care, and babies wear like three, four, seven outfits a day, like as often as he spits up and gets it on the collar, we change it. We don't, because of that neck, the roll sitting on the collar, it's, no, we don't leave him with anything wet on his neck. We learned that lesson. Um, so we change him all the time. So who cares if he is wearing Tuesday on Thursday, whatever, it's going to get washed and he can wear it on Thursday when Thursday comes. It doesn't matter. Oh no, 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 that won't work for Steve. He has to wear the day he's on. And like yesterday was Saturday. He wore Saturday. Got up this morning, he hasn't had his, you know, dress for the day for the game yet. But <laughs> so he's still wearing Saturday and it's Sunday, and I know it's bothering him. I know it is. And if I let him go wake Roland up from his nap or pick him up when Roland wakes up from his nap, I will find a baby in an I Love Sunday shirt instead of an I Love Saturday shirt because he's so silly, that husband of mine. Anyways, <sighs> okay, so yesterday, Roland and I were chilling. And he got a gem for Christmas, and he thinks, like, the Rainbow Forest gem, he thinks that is the greatest thing. He will lay there, tummy or back, and, like, stare at the animals that are hanging above his head, and hit, and yell, and kick, and he is just, like, in heaven. So, he's, um, at this age, able to sit for with an activity for about an hour. So, I let him do that, hang out, you know, we can read books later. So he was hanging out, reading, not reading, hanging out, yelling at the tiger, white tiger, on his gym set. And I was watching Round the Twist with Karen, because everybody loves Round the Twist. And, you know, she's the only podcast I really religiously kept up with while I was on maternity leave. So that's how much I love her. But I fell behind over Christmas. So I had, like, three episodes back, back to back to back to watch. And as I was watching them, and she was working on her... Haunted Vineyard um, Hitchhiker Shawl for the Knit Girls Knit Along, another wonderful podcast, I don't have to tell you that. Um, as I was watching her knit on that, I was like, I want to knit on that, I want to do it, I want to do it, because you know I ordered the yarn but didn't cast anything on. And so by the second episode of watching her working on it, I had cast, one, cast it on too. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I want to be like Karen. <laughs> I want to have the same shawl. I know a lot of people are knitting it. There were 10 patterns to pick from for the knit along. And so inevitably there will be several haunted vineyard hitchhiker shawls out there. And it's funny, every time I wear a shawl to work, they all freak out and they love it. And so it's like, well, why don't I wear more shawls? So here I am, here it goes. I have, I don't know how well you can see the color. I am using US size four, 3.5 millimeter needles. The pattern calls for three millimeter, but I didn't want to. Just to be honest, I didn't want to. Um, my interchangeables go down to fours. I thought a four was small enough, so that's what I did. Um, yeah, I love my knit picks. So, cast on yesterday morning, I'm going to say, and I have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen points. Let's write that down. And this is um, an 80% superwash, 20% nylon. It's a little um, crunchy. I'm hoping that when it washes, it will be less crunchy. But I love the color. It's really pretty. I uh, don't even mind that bit of pooling, which is unusual for me. I think it's going to make a very lovely shawl. So, so far, wait, hold on. You definitely need to see this next to the Patriots. I mean, it's perfect together, right? This is totally how I'm going to work. Um, yeah, so it'll go around. And I like that this edge sort of has a curve to it. So that's the inside edge, and it's definitely 
curved from all of the increases. You're doing increases and then constant decreases at the edge. It's a great little pattern. Super easy to memorize. Um, see, it's written on my little paper. And yeah, I think that's about it for this. So I have 16 points. I'm supposed to go to 42. It will go slower, of course, from here on out. And I am a shedding fool all over it. Um, but yeah, that's where it's at now. So aren't you glad I waited so long to record? Gave myself some time to get some knitting content to show you. It's nice to have lots of things to share because the knitting time is definitely cut down. So moving on, let's talk about 2012. What about your knitting goals? Do you have any? I went to lunch with some co-workers last week and one of them is just, she's a riot the way she, it's like she must read some book that says, here are top conversation starters. So she's like, where would your dream vacation be? What would your dream car be? What's the best car you ever own? Like, so we go out to lunch and she's asking, what are your 2012 New Year's resolutions and no weight loss ones? And so people are like, there are five of us sitting at the table and people are saying them and I was sitting there thinking, mm, I don't have any resolutions, but I do have knitting resolutions. So here's my thought. I would like to knit um, 12 sweaters, vests, tops of some sort for Roland in 2012, right? 12 is not hard. I've already knit him several sweaters. I'm just thinking. Wait, let me count. Since he's been born, I've knit the Green Fair Isle, the, the Sunday's Coming Mardi Gras sweater, the Oz vest, if I were keeping it, the Pembroke vest. That's four since he was born in four months. So it should be a breeze. And vests are faster than sweaters anyways. So, but I will do some more sweaters because, you know, baby needs sweaters too and his arms he'll be able to do things a little more easily and then keeping with my altruistic I'm not just gonna knit socks for me I'm sorry my back hurts and so I'm kind of like Ugh. so you're probably looking at the Patriots thing being like come on sit up what's wrong with her is her back okay no okay let's sit straight um altruistic sock knitting so I would like to knit 12 pairs of socks this year not a hard accomplishment I knit 30 pairs of socks usually I don't know I knit a lot of socks but I would like to knit 12 pairs of socks that are not for me which will be the challenge <laughs> so I'm gonna work on that that's one of my goals the other 2012 goal for me is going to be to knit 12 shawls last year I want to say I knit four or five the year before I knit one so we're well on the way the hitchhiker will be the first one and I'm not committing myself that these shawls are going to be lace masterpieces if they are citrons, Multnomahs, hitchhikers. What else is another simple one? I like the sideways construction so maybe a um, shoot, Saroyan or the color work of Stephen West. Those are easy, right? It's stock net pattern. You just pay attention a little bit every here and there. I can handle that. So I'm going to shoot for 12 shawls. So are you with me? 12 tops for Roland, 12 pairs of socks not for me, 12 shawls. That's the goal. And then I asked Steve what he thought I should have for uh, like New Year's resolution slash goal for 2012. And he was like, I wrote it down. Steve says, draw down the stash. <laughs> and I was like, well, what does draw down the stash mean? And he was like, knit it all. <laughs> and I was like, uh, dear, there's like 12 years worth of stash out there or 10 years worth of yarn and so he was like this I was like what are you doing he's like well if you're gonna knit it all you're gonna need to knit it none of those little tiny needles like you use for socks the big needles and big stitches and you'll get it done faster and I was just cracking up so hopefully I will draw down the stash so that's all I'm gonna have for a amount of yarn to knit ghoul right I'm buying a lot less yarn than previous times in my life so by default, I will be knitting down yarn, but I'm not going to go on a diet. I'm not going to go, you know, cold turkey, no buying yarn or no. The only thing I'm going to say is that I should actually take a snapshot because I do have everything up on Ravelry. I should check out how much I have in stash, how many miles of yarn and just say, okay, next year at this time, I will have less. <laughs> That's good. Trust me. I've set yardage goals and trying to draw down and I never ever 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 
accomplish it because I end up going out and in one weekend buying three sweaters worth of yarn. So, and I'm a big girl, so three sweaters worth is a lot of yarn. Anyway, so those are my 2012 goals. 12 tops, 12 socks, not for me, 12 shawls, and draw down the stash. So, a year from now, we will be sitting here or somewhere else in this house, and I will tell you how I do. So, that, I think, my friends, is all I have for you this episode. Um, yeah, I hope to talk to you again in 10 or fewer days, and here is hoping you have a wonderful new year, that 2012 is prosperous, no, prosperous, <laughs> and full of knitting and love and joy in your lives. So, that being said, I love you all. Have a great time. Bye.